Praise the Lord, everybody. How many of you love the Lord this morning? How many of you come to bless the Lord today? How many of you come to lift him up today? Everybody say, welcome, Pastor Everett, today. Hey, come on, God is good in this place. Let's clap our hands and bless the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for what you're going to do in this place this morning, oh God. Prepare our hearts and our minds to receive from you. Hallelujah. We want to start off by welcoming all of our guests. Welcome to the Church of Omaha. You're welcome here. The Church of Omaha is a spirit-filled church where everyone can be transformed by the hope and healing promised through Jesus Christ. We'd like to invite all of our guests after service to go to our welcome booth. It's right when you come through the double doors, out this door to your left. There you'll see Sister Chris Ash, Sister Dana Brown, Sister Chris Arms, or our First Lady, Sister Shannon Powell. All you ladies can raise your hand so everybody can see. If you have need of a Bible, you can see Pastor Jack. He's way over there in the back. If you need a Bible, you can get that from him. At this time, all the ushers can come forth so we can collect this morning's tithes, offerings, and alms. God loves a cheerful giver. And we've been giving cheerfully here, and we've been seeing some of the fruits from our sacrifices and the seed sown. Amen. We just want to announce that we need more candy for next, next Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Amen. We need a lot of candy, a lot of candy. You can turn in a gift card Wednesday to Sister, Sister Alicia, and she'll go pick that up for you if you don't have time to stop. Um, I know we're all going to come through at the last minute. That's usually what we do with this. So um, I prefer king-size candy, but dropping king-size candy bars from the rooftop, it kind of doesn't work for some of the kids. So. so just give Sister Alicia the money, and she'll get that. Today marks 1,545 days of consecutive prayer here at the Church of Omaha. Can somebody give God that hand praise for that? Can you, can you worship him and thank him for faithfulness and prayer and consecrating our life to God? Amen. Who here came something, came here looking for something for God? Who here is searching and seeking, saying, God, there's something that I want to get right in my life? Amen. Hallelujah. Can somebody put their hands together? Hallelujah. Glory.
sinned. Oh, but you've been my forgiveness. There's nobody like you. No other name. Nobody like him. Go ahead. Worship him in your problem.
never heard the name of Jesus. They've only known Buddha. They've only known the Hindu gods. They've only known what was given to them, and that's a false teaching. But we're privileged today to call out that name of Jesus, the name that is higher, the name that is deeper, the name that is more powerful than anything in this earth combined. Just say that name of Jesus. Just say that name of Jesus today.
disciples found themselves fearful for their situation, locked up in a room. They were in hiding. And Jesus, after he was crucified, he walked through the wall to where they were to comfort them. You may be behind a wall that you're too afraid to, to tear the wall down or to even open the door. But we serve a God that knows your heart. You may not even be able to vocalize it because you're so tormented. But even within your heart right now, you can say, yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus, come in and get me out of here. I believe that right now as we continue to see that the Spirit will rain down on us and he will begin to walk through the wall where your torment resides and he will deliver you out of the situation. And that deliverance is first going to start up here. Who would like that this morning? Everybody should raise their hand because everybody's dealing with something. Everybody has a tormentor to some degree. So as we sing this song, I want you just to raise your hand and just say, yes, Jesus. You saying, yes, Jesus, by faith and saying, God, forgive me for whatever I've done in this situation. But God, yes, Lord, deliver me. Yes, Lord, I yield myself to you. Yes, Lord, come in right now. Comforter, friend, savior, yes, Jesus. Rain down right now. thank you Jesus we thank you I don't want to take the presence of God for granted I, I thank him for it I, I'm grateful that he chooses to be here with us this morning I, I thank you 
the Lord this morning. I thank you, Father. I thank you. I don't, I don't take you for granted. I, I don't take your presence for granted, Lord God. I, I want to take advantage of this opportunity, oh God, to, to fellowship with you, that you can distribute something from your kingdom into me so I can have a greater understanding of who you are and what your will is, Lord God. Father, I, I need it in my life, Lord, more and, and more and more and more each day, oh God. I, I thank you. I thank you. I receive from your table right now, oh God. Right now, Jesus, right now, Jesus, uh, search me, search my heart, Lord. Anything that's not like you, that's within me, Lord God. Rip it out right now. Take it out right now, oh God. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I rejoice in your presence, Lord God. Uh, I rejoice, Lord God. And uh, I'm glad, oh God, to be in your house this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that I can be in your presence and leave a different way than I came, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for, for changing me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited about what God is doing. I'm excited. I, I thank God for this opportunity. I, I don't take it lightly. I don't take it lightly. I don't take it lightly. I don't take it lightly at all. I thank you, Jesus. And I, I pray that somebody who's been tormented can leave here free today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. It's 12, 11. I know one time I, I shared a story about a man who uh, found out about a restaurant and he researched it. He went to the restaurant. He looked at the menu, talked to the chef. He did everything but actually tasted the food himself. I was at work about a few weeks ago, and I was there working, you know, kind of in a, a service capacity, and they had rolled out a new menu. And so what they, I, me personally, I, I talk to Brother Tang about this all the time. I think the whole restaurant industry, they eat way more than they serve. I mean, they, and uh, when I go to service to buffets, I'm like, you can offer me something every time. Like, I think I, think I should be able to eat free when I go service the machine at the buffets every time because the food is, is just in surplus. But um, prayerfully, I'm praying for that favor, you know, kind of hanging around, looking, asking certain things about certain cuisines. But so this day in particular, this morning I was there, and they were beginning to, this happened on two separate occasions. Uh, the first one was at Longhorn Steakhouse, and they were getting ready to roll out a new menu. And the chefs, they were in there preparing, and they had like 12 plates where they prepared it. And I'm in there kind of, you know, doing my little thing, doing my, my work. And, you know, I could smell the steak. Like, they, they, they made like steaks and lobster tail. Like, this is not just burgers and sandwiches. And I'm like, wow. And <laughs> my sister, you shall be filled sooner than you think. Trust me. <laughs> Then the chef says, Every, come on, man, come on. You know, he's our guest here. You know, you come and you, you partake of this too and let us know what you think. And so at first I'm kind of timid and I'm kind of, you know, you know, taking a little bite size. He said, man, no, man, you know, we've got plenty. Go ahead and eat. So I'm, I'm eating steak and lobster tail, you know, and I'm like, wow, this is good. And, but I understood why they do this. Because now the chefs know how to better prepare the meal because of the critiques. And the servers know how to sell the meal. So since they had been first partakers of what the restaurant had to offer, the worst thing is when you go to a restaurant and you're asking a server about the menu and they have no clue. Oh, I, I want to uh, get this and, and have, have you tried it? No, I haven't tried it, but they say it's good. I'm like, well, I need somebody who knows what they talking about. I, I don't want to talk to the man who talked to the man who talked to the man. I, I want to talk to the man myself. Like, I, I want somebody who's tasted and that know that the cuisine is good. I, I need to send me somebody who's tried some stuff here. Send me somebody who's tasted the steak and tasted the lobster and tasted the burger. That's the person that I want to talk to. It happened here recently, and this is where this hit me. I'm sitting there, and there was lasagna and different types of pasta. I was at an Applebee's, and I'm tasting it, and, and I'm like, wow, you know, this is good. And, and so now I'm asking somebody other serve, man, what do you think about this, and what do you think about that, you know? And, and I was asking them, how are you going to sell this 
to patrons that come in. So they begin to kind of rehearse with me the points that they would tell them. One of them even so, there was something that he didn't particularly like, but he could still explain it in a way to where I still liked it because he had tasted it. Like, you know, this wasn't for me because I'm more of a tomato-based sauce than a, a, a cheese base. But, you know, if you like sweet sauces, then this is the one that you go with. And so I started thinking, and of course, the scripture came to me, you know, taste and see that the Lord is good. And I'm like, wow, I'm like, how can we truly explain to people that God is good if we've never partaken of it for ourselves? And this brings me to my title this morning, Endued to Endure. Endued to Endure. Amen. Father, we thank you for the word that we're going to read, Lord God. We pray that you would just open our hearts to receive it, Lord God. We, we thank you for the power that you've given us, Lord. Father, we understand that we have a need of it, Lord God. We understand that it's more than just a seal. We're grateful for your seal, Lord God. But we have to understand that there's something that's supposed to be activated with this power, Lord God, that we can utilize it in our everyday life, and it'll help us to endure through the things that we are going through. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know if Bishop and, and, and my brother back there remembers this, but this came from a prayer meeting. This is when the configuration was different. I remember we were here one night and we were praying, and, and I forget what I was going through, what my brother Keith was going through, but the word came to me that every, you're going through this because I've given you the power to endure it. And then the scripture in Luke came to me, and this is what we're going to read now. Luke 24. 44 through 53. I, I can just read it. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet had no honor in his own. I'm sorry, I'm wrong. That's true too. That's in the word. <laughs> I remember one time I was, I was supposed to read. 1 Corinthians, but I read 2 Corinthians chapter 7. That's a scripture that said it's good for man not to touch a woman. Now, that's probably the only scripture that I probably know, you know. And so, uh, my pastor said to read the scripture. I read the wrong one, and you could hear a pin drop in there. And he was like, well, that wasn't a one, but it's still a word, amen. I, I, guess, somebody, I guess somebody needed to hear that. So, it's good for man to, touch, to not touch a woman, um, especially if she's not your wife. Now, some guys don't know that, you know. So, Amen. Yeah. All right. 24 verses 44 through 53. This won't be long. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. But first, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. So we know that we've been blessed with the gift of the Holy Ghost, uh, the, the ability of the Holy Ghost, which power is simply uh, ability, and we've been given that ability. So if we've been given any measure or any uh, measure or length of God's ability, that's more than just our natural ability. That's why we can do some things where before we had God in our life, we would not be able to do. This is why if a songwriter picks up a pen and writes a, a, a song, they will say that God gave me the words to it. If you write a book, you say this was inspired of God. You know, if, if, if anything that I do that's good, it comes from God affecting my life in a righteous way. Does that make sense? We all understand that. We know that we've been dued with power from on high. But I want to talk more importantly about that power potentially being stripped away from us if we're disobedient. I was, rec I was recently, you know, with my family, and 
I heard this in a, a movie where the, the, the power that this individual possessed was taken away from him for a moment. And I was able to physically see the difference in his ability. And I started immediately thinking, like, I take for granted that the reason why I can do some of the things that I do is not because of my natural DNA. Especially when you've been in church your whole life, sometimes you don't see the difference. You think, well, I've always done this. I've always understood this. But it probably wouldn't be until the power of God or the power is stripped away from our life that we can say, wow, 90% of what was good in me had nothing to do with me. And you could see Jesus telling us the Sadducees and the Pharisees this. Like, why does it say that you do good? Like, you wouldn't have what you have if somebody else wouldn't have given it to you. So how can you boast about what you have if what you have isn't even yours? I was going to read the account of, of Saul, who had the power stripped away. But he had operated with the power so long, or with God's favor so long, that he thought that it was him. He thought that it was him, and I'm, I'm going to take my time and read it. We, we have time here. I'm going to take my time and read this because it humbles me to think having to live a life without the power of God influencing, affecting, leading, and guiding me in any way. This should also humble me and grant me a greater measure of mercy when I'm dealing with individuals who, who, who don't even know Christ yet. Like factoring all of the mistakes that we still make, even though we do have the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. Could you imagine somebody trying to make it and limp to the finish line with no power at all? More than likely being tormented by evil spirits? How much more mercy should we be able to grant saying, you know what, you need this. No, you can't make it on your own. Yes, I understand you're being tormented because I would be tormented too if I didn't have the presence of God in my room at night when I sleep. If, if I couldn't walk a, a perimeter of protection around the, the territory that God has given me. Yes, I understand that you're being t tormented. Yes, I understand you keep on falling and failing because you need the power of God in your life. And you need to be endued with the power of God today if you have not. And if you have the power of God lying dormant in your life, it needs to be activated because you will not be able to make it through your situation. You cannot make it in this earth without the power of God operating in your life. And Christians, I can tell how much power is in operation or lack thereof based on how much fear you have in your life. Because if you truly believe that God could deliver you out of any and every situation, you would not fear what goes on in this earth at all. Where are the fearless Christians in 2018? Because if you're a Christian that lives in fear, I question the amount that you trust God. I have to. Me and Bishop have had this conversation many times. How can I follow you to heaven if you don't trust God enough to protect you and to provide for you on earth? Even Jesus himself, they sought to kill him when he was, what, two years old. But you know what? God had a plan for that. You think if somebody conspired against me and you, God don't have a plan? You think God don't have a plan for Israel? You think for one minute God does not have a plan for any man or woman who's been martyred or persecuted for his namesake? Jesus does love us, but that love is to give us a confidence in his power and understand that we can do the exploits that he's called us to do under his protection. Amen. I just want to read about, about Saul because this, this fascinated me. I, I never want to get too comfortable or too, or too, I never want to take them for granted. And I, I can understand this relationship. Sometimes when you get married, men, women, husbands, wives, we kind of get complacent to where we take the little things that our spouse does for us for granted. And we no longer appreciate it because it's always been there. And we don't factor in the sacrifice that it took for your wife to get up 45 minutes before you and, and get your coffee made. 
This morning I was on the way to church and I had a little bit too much coffee in my mug and it spilled a little bit. And then Tyra said, well, Pop, why do you put so much coffee in the coffee mug? I said, I don't, I don't make my own coffee in the morning. And she was like, well, why don't you tell Mom? I said, you think I'm going to tell the one who makes my coffee every morning? I said, no, that was my fault. I, I should have sipped a little bit of it before I left. You know, that, that's on me. That's on me. <laughs> that's not my wife's fault. That's on me. <laughs> I don't want to start taking, that may be small to some people, eight ounces of beans and water. But I factor in what it took for her to take her time to do that for me. And in year three, I want to appreciate it as much as I did for the very first cup. And in year 30, I want to appreciate the sacrifice that it takes just to do that one menial task, some people may think. Sometimes with God, especially with kings, we see throughout the Bible, but definitely here. I'm going to read this. Thank you, Jesus. And this is the last point that I want to make, and then we're going to. Thank you, Jesus. It's 1 Samuel 16, 12 through 8, if you want to give it, get it. But I'm just going to, 12 through 18, I'm just going to read it now. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Sit and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look on. And the Lord says, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forth. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Very next verse. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. God, he said, you know what, no, because you're misusing the ability that I've given you. You're misusing the favor. You're misusing the anointing. I'm going to take it from you. I've always heard that God, you know, you know, once you're anointed, you're always anointed. Can't nobody take your anointing. Well, man may not be able to, but God can. He absolutely can. Because he's not going to leave you in a position of power and authority over anybody's life to lead them to a devil's hell. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, I'm never going to be the CEO of a company. I'm never going to be a king of a nation. But you are going to be the head of a household. You may be the head of a department at a church. Amen. Man, this is, this is for you. Because everybody want to be called Big Daddy. Everybody want to be king at home. But you got to understand, you have to lead the way God tells you to. Amen. Can all the brothers say amen? Amen. Amen. And God forbid if you don't or if you have not been. Because the chapter before this, God basically tells Samuel to tell Saul, this is what you're going to do. You can go to Amalek. You can, do, you can go and you can overtake them, but destroy everything. He did not. It was that simple. He did not do what God told him to do. And the crazy thing about it is Saul actually said, well, well, well go to God for me and, and make it right. What I got to do to make this right? And at first I was kind of wondering, well, why didn't God receive that? To me, that's just like, a brother coming to me saying, hey, man, go, go tell my wife I'm sorry. <laughs> brother, you better go make that right on your own. <laughs> you better be on bended knee on your own. You better be confessing some things on your own if you truly want to mend that union there. I want us to ponder, what would it feel like if the power of God was stripped away from your life at any given moment? What, what we know will happen because we know that God is light. We know that you will be in darkness. We know what happened to Judas when he no longer had the protection of God. I don't want any of us to take that for granted. I don't want any of us to think that we are where we are because of what we've done. Hello, none of us. 
Now, for those of you here who have not been able to figure out how to utilize the power of God that's in your life to be able to endure some of the situations that you may have put yourself in or your family may have put yourself in or God may have called to as a time of testing. Now is the time. Let us stand. You know, God's ways are not like our ways. I shared this in, in, in our men's prayer. I said, you know, I, I, I wish I had a better understanding of why God does things the way that he does. I know that he does it because he doesn't want man to glory. Because if I could call the shot and I say, Brother Joseph, this is what's going to happen X, Y, and Z. If I do that two or three times in a row and I'm three for three or four for four, at some point he's always going to seek me out instead of seeking God for himself. Now, it's different for you to go to God and say, God, I need a word from you. I need a word from you. I need you to, 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 to give me something so I can know that I'm headed in the di right direction. This week, it may be me coming to you. Next week, it may be uh, Brother Cole. Next week, it may be his wife. Next week, it may be Bishop. It may not be Bishop. It may be one of the children. This morning, he came and brought me some mints. I don't know what he was trying to tell me, but I received it. <laughs> and you, you talking about favor. You know, a king has the authority to look at you and to say, you know what? You can have whatever you want in my kingdom. You name it. And when he gave it to me, I said, you know what? I want to favor this young man. Now, I don't have a whole kingdom, but whatever he wants on earth, under $20, he can have it right now. Write it down. I can make it come to pass because I am that powerful. I got $20 power. I can make that happen right now. Signed, sealed, and anything under $20. Get it Amazon Prime. It'll ship in two days for you. I love you. <laughs> endure to endure who wants to be endued with the power of the Holy Ghost this morning who can remember and think about some situations in their life that they, they believe they could have handled differently had they exercised the gift and stirred up the gift that was on the inside of, inside of them maybe I wouldn't have responded the wrong way maybe I would have been in position to help somebody instead of helping myself maybe I would have been in a position to recognize that you know what I can still find favor in this situation I don't always have to be in the palace I can find favor in the pit I can find favor in a job I don't like I can find favor anywhere as long as God is with me, as long as I'm endued with the power from on high. Hallelujah. I would like all of the iron men to come up here. You know, I, 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 love, I, I love the men of God. I do. I love them. Or if you're a male biologically, either way, come up here, please. Even the young men, please. Please. You know, I, I think it is, a, it is an awesome responsibility to be a man. I do. I think it's a lot that weighs on our shoulder. I think that we go through a lot. I think that we have to overcome a lot. I think that we have to say no a lot. But we have to understand, too, that when God come knocking on our door for us to give an account what's going on in our household, he's not going to call your wife. He's going to call you. And even naturally, I don't like to put myself in a situation to where I don't have an answer for something that I've done. Even on my job, my boss come to me and say, Everett, well, you're spending too much time in one account. Well, I talk a lot. It may be wrong, but I talk a lot. But for me to get caught doing something that's illegal, and I, I, well, I, 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 I don't want to, uh, uh, it, you know. And as a man, when God comes to us and he asks us, okay, well, what's going on in this situation? We should have an answer. And it can't be, like Bishop said, it's because of the woman you gave me. It's because of these kids. It's because of that dog. Every time I come in here, that dog is sitting in my seat, and it gives me a bad attitude, and everything is down here from there. No, he wants to know why you did what you did, why you have not done what he told you to do. Now, as a man, we should like that type of accountability. We should, we should say, you know what, God is black and white, A, B, C, X, Y, Z, you know, line upon line, precept upon precept. If you tell me what to do, there's not going to be any hyperbole. It's not going to be, you know, any hidden agenda. He's going to let me know exactly what's required of me. I can go and execute it, and I can hear well done. I love that. I love that militancy about it, if that's not a word. It sounds good. You know what I'm saying? I like that. That's easy for me. I, I, I like having the target that I have to hit, and I can work to hit it. I thank God for that. But first, we have to know what's required of us by God. And the question is, do we know as men 
what's required of us by God. So we're going to pray. First as men, ladies, you can follow in behind us so you can pray as well. This is for all of us. But I just, I love our brothers. We have something special in the Iron Men. I don't know if Bishop remembered this, but I think on two or three occasions, we prayed for somebody over the cell phone in Iron Men prayer. So much so that the brother said, man, I could feel the power of the men praying together that he almost made like a journey here just to, just to partake of it for himself. Because it's rare. Now the question is, men, do we want to change? Do we want to, do we want to be better? Do, do we want to be able to stand before God? Whether we're right or wrong and say, God, make me and mold me. God, I, 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 if we want to have a testimony like David, we got to have a repented heart. We have to have a repented heart. Is that all right? I want all the men just to pray. And ladies, just file in and pray. I, I know you all have been meeting too and you all have had tongues and interpretation and God is doing great things. If you have not made it, as the men pray, women, if you have not been making it to prayer, figure out a way to get there. Because the prayer sets the tone for the services. Come on, men. Keep on. Stir up the gift that's on the inside of you. We've been talking about it in our men prayer that, that we want the women to be able to experience what God has been doing for us and, and to us and through us in our men prayer. Well, now is our opportunity. We want our sons and our daughters to see that we're men of prayer, that, that we can be broken and we've consecrated our life before God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, Lord God, stir up the guilt that's on the inside of us, Lord. Any parts of the power or ability that you've given us that's lying dormant, oh God, we pray that you would loose it, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just for a few more minutes. Just for a few more minutes. We have 1236. We're still early. For a few more minutes. Come on, somebody need this. Let's pray for the men who aren't here. Let's pray for our brothers who aren't here right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, wherever they are, that they can hear these prayers, oh God. That their heart can line up with your desires for their life, oh God. That their mind can be like yours, oh God. That their thoughts are pure like yours, Lord God. Father, that their heart can, can, can have a heart of repentance, Lord, that they can receive from your word, Lord God, and the fivefold ministry that you put over their lives, oh God, that they can yield their lives to you, Jesus, that the power isn't stripped away from them, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you. Any men have a particular prayer? Right now is the time. Right now is the time. Come on. You don't. You may not have tomorrow. You don't know what it's going to cost you. You don't know when that one time is to where it's not that he didn't love Saul. It's that I can no longer trust you with my authority. I can't trust you with my power. Because you won't do what I ask you to do. You won't do what I tell you to do. How can I put you in a position of leadership? How can I put you in a position of power and authority when you won't do what I do tell you to do and when you won't follow my commandments? Open. Father, my heart is open to you, Lord. I know something's not right on the inside of me, Lord. But you know, Jesus. You know, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If your husband up here, you should be praying. If your husband up here, you should probably be on the floor prostrate before God praying for him. Because you're the one that got to live with him. Somebody pray for their husband right now. The man been going through something. The enemy trying to sift him as wheat. He got things bombarding his mind on a daily basis. The man want to give up. The man thought about walking out many times. Because sometimes he feels inept. Sometimes he suffers from the same insecurity that you have. Right now, Jesus. Father, we need you right now. We don't want to leave until you get a hold of us, Lord. We need to be endued with your power, oh God, from on high. In order for us to endure what's going on in our life, 
in this world, on our jobs, at home. Let's tarry a few more moments for our brothers right now. I want to know if it's a brother that can worship God like they haven't worshipped him in a long time. I want to know if it's a man in this place that can get drunk in the Holy Spirit right now. I want to know if somebody's willing to take another sip of his goodness, to take another sip of his power right now. If you can drink Bud Light and you can drink Hennessy and you can drink vodka, why can't you partake of the goodness of Jesus until you're no longer in control? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Thank you for receiving us. Thank you for receiving our life as a sacrifice unto you right now, Jesus. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's carry the presence. You don't know the next time you're going to feel his presence like this. Go through your checklist and say, Jesus, I need this, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you to explain this. I need understanding. I need clarity. Now is the time. If there's anybody that I've hurt due to my inability to control the power that God has given me, I'm sorry. I apologize. God, forgive me. I don't want to hurt anybody. I, I don't want to come across the wrong way. I, I don't want to be too abrasive, Lord God, in delivering your word, Lord God. Lord, yeah. Forgive us, Lord, as men, Lord God. We, we don't want to hurt anybody, God. We don't want to do We don't have all the answers, Lord. We don't have all the answers, God. We need you, Lord. We don't, we don't have the answers, Father. We need you, Lord. We need you. We need you. We need you, Lord. Uh, come on, man. Tell them you don't have the answer. Tell them there may be a little confusion there, and you want him to take away the confusion. Of brother was just endued with the power for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can just continue to worship. You know, I thank God for enduing in, in in us with his power this morning. Men, you need it. Men, I, I, I know I don't have to be a prophet to say that the enemy is attacking you and attacking your mind. Because that's just a given. Because if he can control the head of a thing, you can control everything. And if we are the head of the household, or, or because it's God's order, the enemy understands God's order. So it's like, if I can get the man out of order, then everybody else can do whatever they want to do. That's why your wife can spend 10 minutes trying to get the kids to do something. And you're sitting there, but it doesn't bother you because you've kind of tuned it out. Like I have. But then my wife will say, babe, can you do something? Every man knows this. I think when you get married, you just endued with it. Hey! Cut all that out down now. And then you go back to doing what you were doing. Why is it? <laughs> and, and everybody just stop. Why is it that the dad can just say, hey! I'm all that. You don't even, you don't even really formulate a real sentence. Just say, hey! Why has God given us that ability? Could you imagine a household that does not have that? Amen. My parents were divorced when I was seven years old. But my mama would call my dad, and he'd get on the phone and say, guess what? Hey! <laughs> he put it on speakerphone, and we'd be like, oh, is he here? <laughs> Even worse than God taking his power away, King Nebuchadnezzar thought he had pride. He thought he did everything on his own accord. God took his image away from him. He turned that brother to a goat. Like you couldn't even recognize. He changed his species. Like you, ain't, you, know, you ain't even a human no more. <laughs> you know? so God is the only way that we're going to make it. They play, continue to pray, continue to worship, and just bask in the presence of the Holy Ghost. The next time your kids are kind of running all around the house, just say, hey, and watch what they do because you've been endued with power from on high. Amen. God bless you. Love you.